video we're going to create a tetrahedron and then a net for that tetrahedron uh, as a follow-up to our introduction to sheet metal tooling and on shape and creating nets for laser cutting. So this is where we left off in the previous video, um, which you certainly need to watch before this one. To get out of this view, I can just click again on this button right here, and that'll bring me back to my quote standard uh, editor in Onshape. So what I might do now is within the same document, create a new part studio, and that's going to give me a fresh start where I can create my tetrahedron. You'll see a familiar top, right, and front planes. And so we'll go ahead and define our tetrahedron with the bottom uh, on the top plane so it looks natural in its uh, resting view. So we'll click once on the top plane, quick, click on sketch, and then hit N so we can look directly at the top plane. And what we're going to do is create a triangle. Now we have two ways of creating polygons that aren't either circular or rectangular. And so we're going to choose the inscribed polygon. It doesn't really matter which for this use case, but we'll click once on the origin. And then we're going to drag out, and you'll notice it's a hexagon, not a triangle. That's fine. This is just the default number of sides. So just click anywhere else, and then you'll slide side to side to change the number of sides of your shape. So when we get to three, we'll click again, and you'll notice we have a triangle. Now this triangle is not fully dimensioned, right? we haven't told it how wide the sides are, nor have we made it oriented in any specific way. So if I choose um, from my constraints options, horizontal, and then choose the bottom edge, now my triangle at least has to face upright. And then what we can do is go ahead and accept the sketch because we've got to think about the way that a tetrahedron is actually defined a little bit here. So we can model it in 3D. It's a little more complex than a cube. The tetrahedron doesn't have sides that meet at right angles, as you know. It has these three other sides besides the base that form together to make sort of a pyramid and meet at the top. So if you look at the definition of a tetrahedron from this ancient website, you'll see that the height of the tetrahedron is equal to the square root of 3 over 2 times the length of a side, which they're calling A here. So we could type those in and just remember how long we made one, but we can actually use another really neat feature of Onshape which is called variables. Um, and their variables are just like they are in algebra. Let me see if I can find the button for them. Um, under this plane dropdown, you'll see variables. So we're going to create a new variable, and we're going to call it side length, with all one word, lowercase s, capital L. And let's just define the side length of our triangle. Let's go ahead and say 7 centimeters, just like we used for our last cube. We'll say check. And now we've actually defined the side length after the sketch. So what we want to do is click and drag and move it above so that this side length is available to us in this sketch. The other thing we'll need is the height based on that side length. And so you'll notice it's the square root of 3 over 2 times the side length. So what we're going to do is create another variable. We're going to call it height. And we can actually do a little bit of math right in the value field. And so what we can do is sqrt for square root of 3 divided by 2 times, and then if we use the octothorpe or the hashtag symbol, you'll notice it pops up with side length as an option. That's a previously defined variable. So we'll say side length. This way our height gets updated if we decide to change our side length, which is really convenient. And so we'll hit check. And we want to make sure everything's in centimeters. If not already, what you can do is click on this menu and go to workspace units and just make sure this is set to centimeters. So now before our sketch, we've got the side length and the height defined. So let's go ahead and double click on our sketch so we can resume editing it. Hit N to bring it into our uh, normal view. And then we're going to hit D for dimension and we're going to click just once on one side and then once somewhere else. And now we can type in a dimension for the side. Rather than typing in 7 centimeters, we're going to type in hashtag and then we can choose one of those variables. We'll use side length to define the length of one side. And you'll notice that our triangle resized. It turned black because it's now fully defined. And so we can go ahead and let's call this triangular base, just to be clear. OK, so we've got our side length, our height, and our triangular base. If we hit Shift 7 to return to this view, you can see that our triangular base sits there. Now what we need to do is to define a point directly above the center of this triangular base, which is why we centered it on the origin. And that point needs to sit up height centimeters above this plane. So we're going to click on the front plane, which you'll notice bisects the top plane, and we'll say a new sketch, and again hit N so we can look at it straight on, and we'll use this point tool to add a single point. Right? This is an 
infinitely small theoretical point, just like in math. We'll just click somewhere above, you notice how it's snapping to this vertical line above the origin? Somewhere on that vertical line above the origin, and click on point again to stop uh, adding points. This point's blue because it's not fully constrained. We need to define how far above the other part it is. So using two fingers scrolling to zoom in a bit, I'm going to hit D for dimension, click once on the point, click once on this plane, this horizontal line, and you'll notice as I move, I get a little dimension between them. So if I click, I don't want this to be just 3.3 centimeters, I want it to be hashtag height centimeters, whatever that height works out to be. And you'll notice that it placed a point directly above, um, and now everything is black because it's all fully dimensioned. And so we'll call this the peak. We'll say check. And if we return to our familiar view, we've now got a point in 3D space hovering above our triangle. And these together are going to define the one, two, three, four vertices of our tetrahedron. So if we bring our um, planes back by hitting P, what we can do is actually click once on triangular base and once on peak and say, I'd like to do not an extrusion, but what's called a loft. And that's going to say, take this profile and turn it into this other profile uh, over the distance in between them. And so that's one way we can create a tetrahedron is to loft our triangular base up to a single infinitely small point. So if we click that, you'll notice it actually does the rest of the work for us. It's created our tetrahedron. Let's name it tetrahedron and hit check. And so now we've created a uniform regular tetrahedron made of four equilateral triangles. And using that little mathematical formula we found on this ancient website, and what we can do now is start to create a net out of our tetrahedron. So let's start by right-clicking, renaming our part one, tetrahedron. And with that selected, we're going to choose our sheet metal model button again. We need to choose this second from the bottom option so we can see our original net is not very clever. It's just four triangles that are left up to you to assemble. So let's click again on edges or cylinders to bend and choose a couple of edges, right? The most standard net for a tetrahedron is going to be where you choose to fold it around the bottom edges and you get this really symmetric uh, net where you would be folding these three edges up and leaving a tetrahedron. Another way you could do it um, is if you click on an edge that's already selected it will deselect. We could make another net that looks this way for a tetrahedron and we would end up also with a foldable shape. And so let's go ahead and rename this, uh, or we don't need to rename it, we'll, we'll head uh, hit the green check to select or to accept and then just like before we're going to export DXF or DWG we're going to call this Greist tetrahedron net make sure we have the same things checked as in the previous video hit export and then we should be able to in Adobe Illustrator open up our tetrahedron net we're going to make sure we change this to centimeters and this to one and say OK and now here's our tetrahedron net. We can go to Object, Artboards, Fit to Bounds, and Command-0 to fit. And then the last step is to choose, holding Shift, each of our fold lines, group them, and then change the color of their stroke so that they are distinguishable by the laser cutter. So this is now ready for laser cutting. It's going to cut along the black lines and score along the red lines uh, and be foldable and tapable into a tetrahedron.